Okay, hi everybody. So we've been talking about uh, using practicals to shoot uh, digital video uh, on location, um, conceivably in your own home. Um, I, um, some of you may have seen um, the video that I put out uh, that discusses um, uh, and compares nine different uh, types of bulbs to put into uh, floor lamps or table lamps um, if you're using those uh, fixtures as your key lights or your fill lights uh, or even your edge lights for that matter. Um, what I haven't discussed with you yet is the broad variety of connectivity or um, sockets that exist for lamps, table lamps, house fixtures. Um, and so you may want to be prepared to have to adapt uh, certain things in order to um, get the right kind of globes in these fixtures, the right wattage, the right color, and so forth. Um, so I wanted to start with a few adapters that I have here. Um, the first and most common adapter that you'll want to know about um, working around the house is going to be the uh, what we call the cube tap, okay? or sometimes folks call these a 301 adapter. Now, I don't call them a 301 adapter because once upon a time there was actually a piece of electrical distribution uh, that came out uh, from, uh, I believe it was um, uh, Paladin or Mole Richardson, and um, they had a 301 adapter that looked nothing like this. So I always call this a cube tap. I think it's because it's, you know, it's in the shape of a cube and you can tap into it three different ways from one single input. Um, whatever you end up calling this, uh, as long as everybody around you understands what you're what you're referring to, that's fine. Uh, I think pretty much everybody in the industry at this point understands this as a cube tap. So you might want to learn that nomenclature. Um, it's great. You run one uh, stinger to a particular spot, and then you have three open holes. Uh, in the days of LEDs, uh, that's a fantastic advantage. Um, when we were still using a lot of quartz instruments and things, um, we couldn't go above... Uh, 600 watts in any one of those access uh, holes uh, because the total potential for that entire cube tap was only going to be um, uh, 15 amps. So we, we had to make sure that we stayed below a certain watt level uh, so we didn't burn up the cube tap or, you know, have a, an unfortunate um, incident with fire. Um, the next thing I want to talk to you about is... Um, dimmers, uh, socket dimmers in particular. Um, there are also things like inline dimmers. Here's one that uh, is for a uh, for a neon rig. They also had them for LEDs and, and for incandescent. So you plug it in uh, to your power source and then you plug your, uh, your fixture into um, the dimmer itself and then you have uh, a rheostat um, to adjust the output. And a lot of these uh, dimmers are working on um, just uh, um, square wave um, electronic dimming, uh, pulse width modulation. And uh, once upon a time we had dimmers that worked on resistance, we called them Variax. Uh, very big, very heavy. Um, so these new uh, forms of electronic dimmers, I think are gonna be more handy uh, moving forward. Um, there are also varieties of socket dimmers. So I showed you a couple uh, on um, the lecture uh, keynote. Um, my favorite one here is the, um, I think this is from Leviton. Um, and this was a pretty compact uh, socket dimmer. So it has a medium household base, just like a, a regular old household light bulb. Um, and you screw it into uh, the light bulb socket and then you have your dimmer control right here on the front and uh, you can uh, uh, dim your bulb uh, from zero to 100 uh, percent on this little dial right here and it only adds about an inch and a half to the overall bulb height inside uh, the harp of the lamp fixture itself so if you have um, you know critical depth on a um, on a lampshade for instance it's not going to change the measurement dynamic very much of the fixture that you're using so these are terrific um, uh, they only work on incandescent bulbs or uh, LED bulbs that specify they can be dimmed now some LED household replacements uh, cannot be put on a dimmer um, they're they tend to be the bulbs that are quite a bit cheaper um, you'll pay um, substantially more for an LED replacement bulb that can also be dimmed. But uh, if you do have those, uh, those uh, light, types of light bulbs, uh, this will work on those. Um, there are things we can do to a light bulb socket uh, or a chandelier socket 
um, to accommodate different kinds of bulbs. Um, one of the most uh, common uh, that you will run into is the socket to AC power adapter. And you'll notice that this only has two uh, holes for parallel blade. Okay, so uh, this is a non-grounded um, socket, but presumably um, the lamp that you are tying it into is grounded. Um, and if not, then it, then it is technically an ungrounded uh, adapter. Um, but for um, just allowing access for some supplementary power uh, in, a, in a house lamp or something, it's not particularly a risky device. Um, but they are very, very handy um, for plugging in, for instance, some um, little supplementals like I showed you uh, in my other video uh, about um, rigging the side table lamp. Um, if you had a little uh, fluorescent fixture, for instance, or something that needed an AC power uh, support um, to, you know, to energize, uh, and you wanted to rig the whole thing using one of these and keep everything up and tucked up inside uh, the lamp housing or the lampshade, uh, you know, uh, disguised to camera, this is a good way to go. This can also get you power up high if you're rigging things in a ceiling uh, and you don't have any power outlets uh, where you're running um, small lighting fixtures and so forth from. Uh, and then these can be very handy. In fact, uh, we use these a lot when we use a particular gag uh, that I have here. It's a little bit of a spaghetti mess at the moment, but um, we frequently will rig um, porcelain sockets like this one to accommodate uh, photo flood bulbs or whatever. And then we'll just give it a length of, of um, lamp cord and then an add a tap at the end. And this is what you're gonna use to um, go into your socket adapter, like so, so that you can keep everything tucked up high and out of the way if you needed to add some, some uh, supplementary uh, bulbs to um, maybe a chandelier rig or um, you know, up high in a kitchen, uh, or, um, you know, stuff like, um, for sci-fi, uh, we used to do this a lot in the spaceship rigs that we were working in. Um, just something to give you, uh, access to power in a strange tucked away place that you couldn't run an actual power cable to and so forth and so on. Um, here's another adapter that, uh, does, uh, a similar thing. This is the reverse. Now, this is taking... Uh, a, a power outlet, okay, and giving you a lamp socket, okay? So you could, in essence, um, if you wanted to, or if you had a, um, if you had a, um, an AC outlet in a strange place, like sometimes in kitchens up over the refrigerators, they'll have, uh, tucked in a strange place, a, uh, an AC outlet. And a lot of times it's for either plugging in the fridge or plugging in another appliance like a microwave, um, and so you have AC power tucked up in there and you might have a small uh, fixture that you want to rig up high somewhere like that and, and you could gain immediate access uh, to it by, um, you know, using a, a socket adapter. Um, just, you know, you never know when you're going to run into these things and when you're going to need them. But um, here is the uh, what we call a male add tap that was I just showed you on the other uh, fixture. It comes apart. You just pinch it and pull the um, pull the internals apart and uh, you insert some lamp cord in here, squeeze the two pins together and it knifes in and makes electrical contact. So of course, obviously first you wanna thread it through the protective uh, jacket and then crimp it down and then pull the whole thing together, draw it together. And um, that's your male add -a tap we call it. These are like a buck and a half at Home Depot, and we use these by the bag full, hundreds of hundreds of these uh, in a movie set uh, for um, energizing um, cabinetry, uh, fixtures, appliances, you name it. Um, when we're building sets, most of the time they, they're truly not functional. Uh, and so we have to light them and, and energize things within the set to make the whole thing look like it's like it's actually a working uh, environment. And um, so we use these by the dozens, the hundreds. Um, as far as uh, socket adapters go, so there's a number of different uh, adapters that um, are available. 
Uh, I have a few here to show you. Um, the uh, the first couple are um, uh, candelabra base to standard uh, medium screw base. Okay, so if you have a um, candelabra or uh, a makeup vanity or some kind of uh, fixture like that that has the tiny um, candelabra base uh, bulbs in it. Um, and you need to use a different kind of a bulb, like maybe you want to use a photo flood for some reason, um, and you need the medium screw base, here's your adapter for that. Uh, and then here's the reverse. Okay, so here is a socket that's a medium screw base that we want to reduce to the size of a candelabra base. And so you can do it with that adapter as well. Um, they also make adapters that look like this, but have the AC... Uh, AC input like the other adapter that I showed you we call them pig noses <laughs> um, uh, those are pretty handy as well uh, I was looking through my uh, my my uh, my drawer full of uh, gimmicks and I wasn't able to, to, to locate one for this particular video but um, that is another form of uh, AC tap that we have uh, AC power from a, 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 a medium household screw base here's an adapter that is for it goes into a, a lamp or a socket, a fixture that has the household or medium screw base, and it gives you a two-pin uh, quartz um, socket. Okay, so if you have, um, this is a little big for this adapter, but this is an FRK bulb. This goes into 650-watt uh, focusable Fresnel. But you see how the theatrical uh, fixtures have different kinds of lamp bases. So this is the kind of lamp base that goes in a 650-watt Moltweenie, for instance, and the bulb just sort of seats into uh, a socket inside the fixture, and then it spots and floods inside the fixture. Well, it's a two-pin push base, we call it. Uh, this is a small um, uh, two-pin push base for, uh, looks like for about a 100 watt uh, bulb. So if you're using, um, for instance, the um, the uh, the old Airy 150s, or I've got a Cinemills 150 back there uh, that uses a 100 uh, 100 watt two-pin push bulb, and this is an adapter that will convert that bulb from that fixture to a medium screw base. Uh, what else have we got here? We've got, um, ah, this is called a mogul base adapter, okay? Uh, and this is going to be useful for uh, things like um, in uh, big china hats in warehouses and stuff. Sometimes they'll have, this is a 500 or 1000 watt screw base. It's called a mogul base. Uh, it's not common to typical household situations, so you probably... Uh, won't encounter it very often, um, but the uh, lantern lock um, China ball adapters uh, that I'll talk to you guys about in a later uh, installment um, uses the mogul base socket adapter so that you can either use the 1000 watt single ended uh, incandescent bulbs from Photoflex from their Starlight rig uh, in a China ball um, or you can use the mogul base socket adapter to convert it into medium household base and then you can use that wonderful variety of bulbs that we talked about in my last video the the um the ge 211s 212s and 213s or the sylvania uh 60 watt blues or the 250 watt uh, bcas uh 500 watt ects uh, from sylvania um, all those wonderful photo floods can go into a china ball harp uh, with a mogul to medium base adapter. So uh, that's another type of lamp base adapter. Here's one uh, for a push and twist bayonet. So the old um, uh, ESP FEV 100 watt and 200 watt two pin push base uh, um, bulbs that went in the uh, LTM uh, peppers, uh, the 100s, the 200s, and the 420s. Uh, you could take the bulbs out of those fixtures and stick them in here and then uh, adapt it to a medium screw base and put it in an average lamp. So uh, remember I talked to you a little bit about how household bulbs have a really warm CCT, in other words, like 2700 degrees Kelvin, which is really, really orange. Um, and not uh, sometimes it doesn't look real good on camera, even when you have the camera adjusted to your 3200 Kelvin 
uh, position. Um, so you might want to use a quartz halogen bulb from one of your conventionals that burns at a true uh, 3200 Kelvin to just sort of clean up uh, that dingy yellow uh, umbra that can be in the highlights of, of, of some of your really warm household fixtures. And you can use an, uh, a tungsten halogen um, uh, theatrical bulb in uh, a medium based fixture like a, like a house lamp. Uh, what else have I got? We have um, the four-way adapter. So if you have a single uh, socket and you want to put in four bulbs, uh, for so say you had, um, you know, you had a lamp that um, you really needed some output out of. You were using it for fill, uh, and you had some 60-watt bulbs laying around. You could make a four banger out of that with one lamp socket and four times 60 is only 240 watts. So that's totally fine uh, in a household uh, fixture to load it up like that as long as this isn't going to interfere with any sort of lampshade or anything that you've got working. Um, sometimes the Smith Victor single ended sockets or the clip sockets you can buy from Home Depot that only have one uh, threaded socket on them. You can screw this in there and turn it into you know a high intensity uh, clip light for instance um, and let's see the other thing that i have for you is and these are really handy okay uh, this is an uh, this is an adjustable socket adapter uh, if you have um, recessed lighting um, and so you have a floodlight that's up there and it has good output and and decent color for what you're doing uh, but it's recessed into those ceiling cans. Uh, you use this, thread it up into the fixture, and that brings your socket down below the level of the ceiling. And then you can simply adjust this thing and direct it around and aim your bulb precisely where you want it to go using uh, the socket adapter like this. So uh, this is a... Um, it's called Swivelier, and I believe this is from Leviton. Uh, there's a few manufacturers that make these, and if you look up, look them up in uh, on Amazon, you can find several different distributors for uh, stuff like this. So, the whole point of this conversation is to understand that the you know there's a solution for or there's a workaround for everything, right? If you're going to work in practical locations where uh, you're going to use um, conventional household fixtures or a lot of photo flood bulbs um, to to light your subjects, which is fine. I mean, if, if it works, it works, right? Um, but you may need the aid of some of these adapters to make the connectivity work, okay? So um, keep that in mind. Um, the products are uh, made by uh, Leviton, by Eagle, um, and uh, companies like that. Um, and Smith Victor, uh, and they are uh, out there and available. Uh, uh, if you take a uh, an afternoon and go to Home Depot or Lowe's uh, and just go to their electrical aisle and take a look at what they have available, um, you'll find stuff like this readily available. It's not terribly expensive, um, and a you know a handful of these in your set bag uh, can really be a lifesaver. Uh, so keep it in mind uh, when you're using uh, household practicals and you're working uh, in locations like uh, houses, apartments, uh, and uh, personal spaces um, that uh, it's okay. Uh, an informed approach to lighting, um, an experienced approach to lighting, um, uh, keeping aesthetics of exposure, uh, color uh, accuracy, um, texture and shape. Uh, and contrast, keeping all those things in mind, it's perfectly fine to use um, things like household lamps and so forth. And these adapters will help you make that even more possible by giving you all the different uh, light bulb choices uh, that you could ask for uh, to make sure that you get precisely the results that you're looking for. All right, so that's all I have for you in this video. Thanks so much for tuning in again. Um, I'll see you real soon. If you have any questions for me about any of these uh, adapters, uh, you can drop me an email uh, either uh, at my office or through the LMS. I'll be happy to get back with you. We can set up a, a Zoom meeting if you have um, uh, if you have some fairly extensive questions. Uh, otherwise, um, I will see you around campus and I'll talk to you again real soon. Thanks so much.